Hello, my name is Leah, and today I thought I would make a video that is entirely unoriginal and, quite frankly, irrelevant because the trend is basically over already. And that is a tier list ranking video. I have my laptop right here. That's what I'm looking at when I'm looking this direction. So today I'm going to be ranking every series that I've ever read. I took some of the criteria that Kate's book date used for her tier ranking list video of the same title, ranking every series that she's read, and basically that is to include only books that I have read at least two of the series. I think overall I'm fairly good at if I just don't like the book I won't continue on with the series. Um, there's a few in here that have escaped that criteria, but because of that um, I feel like there won't actually be a ton of books in the trash category because if they're trash I just haven't read them, which means that they're probably not within the list. But that kind of helped narrow down the list a lot because if I included literally every book that is a part of a series we'd be here for a really long time. I need to start screen recording and pray to Jesus Christ Almighty that this works. So these are the categories. Up top we have hard eyes emoji. These are the best of the best, the cream of the crop, my favorite series ever. Under that we have very good, which are books that are very good. Underneath that we have nostalgia because obviously these are books that I like, um, but some of them, the bad elements of them, are kind of carried by the nostalgia that I feel for them. Similarly, under that we have guilty pleasure. Again, books that I like, but at least these, I kind of, I know that they're bad. I can recognize that they're bad and love them anyways. These ones don't necessarily have to have nostalgia as the reason that I like them. They're just guilty pleasures. Underneath that we have Eh. I feel like this is the apathetic category. They're the books that I didn't love, I didn't hate, they just kind of exist in my mind and I've read them and that's about all I can say. Underneath that, didn't like, again, self-explanatory, I didn't like them. And then the bottom category, we have trash can. We'll see if anything makes it in there. We might have an empty category. I don't know. So first up, we have A Court of Thorns and Roses. I feel like with this series, my feelings have changed quite recently. I think I would ordinarily put it in very good, but I I think it belongs in nostalgia. I will always love it, but I feel like nostalgia is the reason I will always love it. Next we have The Chronicles of Narnia. So here's the deal. I didn't read these as a child. Um, I read the first one, but I read these as an adult and they are good books. C.S. Lewis is one of my favorite authors, but I kind of feel apathetic towards the Chronicles of Narnia. I have a little bit of nostalgia for them, but mostly it's just kind of meh for me. Next we have the Delirium series. Boy, did I love these books back in the day. Delirium was like crack to me. I flew through them. I recommended them to everyone. I think Delirium goes in nostalgia. I don't remember if they're objectively good or bad uh, because, you know, it was a while ago, but I do have a a good place in my heart for delirium. Next we have Divergent. Again, loved these back in the day. Allegiant did a lot of things. The movies were garbage and I feel like now that we've exited the dystopian era, I can say I don't really like Divergent anymore. So I'm gonna put this in didn't like. I will always have a little bit of nostalgia for it, but not enough to love it. Next we have Harry Potter. This is gonna be our first heart tier series. I'm always gonna love them. In the middle of a reread right now, actually, this was the first series that I loved. Like, this is kind of my gateway into reading and, you know, I'm just always gonna love Harry Potter. That's just a given in my life. I will be reading these books to my children. Next we have the Heroes of Olympus series by Rick Riordan. This is the follow-up series to the Percy Jackson and the Olympians series. I didn't like these books as much as I liked Percy Jackson. I did still like them, so I don't feel like they belong in eh, so I'm gonna put it in nostalgia. I did like a lot of the new characters. They weren't particularly groundbreaking, and I feel like a lot of what carried the series was nostalgia for Percy Jackson, so. I'm gonna skip Junie B. Jones and actually go find um, the Magic Tree House books. Um, this is not where it goes, but to explain, the Magic Tree House books were my addiction in elementary school. The first thing I did, my, my school was kind of weird. Elementary was kinder to second grade, and then we had an intermediate school, which was third to sixth grade. So the first thing I did when I got to the intermediate school was look for the Magic Tree House books in the library. I'm going to put them in, dare I put it in hard eyes? I think I will put it in hard eyes because I just had so much fun reading these. I loved the fantasy elements. I feel like this is very foundational for me as a reader, not only with it being a series, but you know, the time travel, the magic, all of that kind of stuff. I just loved it. Which brings me to Junie B. Jones. I started reading Junie B. Jones after I had exhausted 
all of the Magic Treehouse books in my library. So it was kind of my replacement and because of that it was kind of just me living nostalgically to Magic Treehouse. They're nothing alike at all. I don't know why I have that connection in my, in my brain, but Judy B. Jones didn't quite uh, get to me the way Magic Treehouse did. Next we have Life As We Knew It. I'm gonna put this in eh, I think. It could go in nostalgia, but I think I'm gonna put it in eh, mainly because looking back, I don't really remember much from it, so clearly it didn't leave a huge impression on me. Okay, next we have the two Left Behind series. I'll do the original one first. For those of you who don't know, Left Behind is a fictional series, clearly, about the end times according to the Christian faith, and it's just one interpretation of what could potentially happen. It's set in the 90s though, so it's getting a little bit outdated. Um, I'm going to put it in nostalgia. I did really, really enjoy the books. Can't remember anything from them, but it was really cool to see a fictionalized version of the Bible, though, because it just really brought that portion of my faith to life and let me think about things in a little bit more of a real way and it did bring up a lot of really interesting moral questions and stuff like that and so overall good series i think i'm just gonna put it in nostalgia though because it's not like a hallmark thing in my life however i did love them enough that i read the left behind teens uh series which is just so funny to me i'm gonna put this one in guilty pleasure <laughs> basically again same scenario, biblical end times, except this one follows teenagers, but it's marketed towards kids. I don't know. It was a ride. I had fun, but I don't really remember anything from it. Next we have Legend by Marie Lu. I'm gonna put this in eh. I remember really enjoying them when I read them, but I only read the first two books and I genuinely can't even remember the characters' names, so. Then we have Matched. Um, I feel like this goes in eh. Or guilty pleasure. I remember really liking it even while people were saying it was bad so I think I'll leave it in guilty pleasure but I never finished the series I didn't read the last book actually I read part of the last book and then put it down because I was bored so maybe eh actually yeah eh. next we have Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson we're gonna put this up into hard eyes emoji this is the first real adult fantasy series that I read and I had such a fun time with it I love Brandon Sanderson as an author now, and that's all there needs to be said. Okay, here's Nevernight. This is the only exception to my only series that I've read at least two books of rule, and that's because I have strong feelings about Nevernight. I read the f entire first book. I wanted to put it down the whole time. I didn't really enjoy myself. I think the story itself is fine, but boy, um, it's a ride. I don't, I don't even know where to begin with this book. If you want to know my thoughts, uh, Read With Cindy has a really great video about Nevernight, which I pretty much agree with everything she says in there. So that's how I feel about Nevernight, and it's going into trash. Next we have Partials. I really liked this series when I read it. It was one of my favorites at the time, but again, I have no recollection of anything that happens. I think that means it goes into Next we have Percy Jackson and the Olympians. This is going up to Hard Eyes Emoji. You gotta love them. I actually read the second book first, um, thinking it was a standalone. Was very confused. Didn't like it. My grandma bought me the first one for Christmas and I was like, dang it, this is that author I don't like. I don't want to read it. But I had to read it because she was gonna ask me if I read it. So I read it and then I loved it and then she bought me the rest of them. And that's the story of the very ratty books that I own now because I've read them so many times. Next we have, this shouldn't be in there. I've only read the first book of this. Can I delete it? No, I can't. Okay, we're just gonna ignore that one. Next we have Among the Hidden by Margaret Peterson Haddix. Um, again, I think I'm just gonna put this in A mainly because I can't remember it, but I remember really enjoying them. I read these in middle school. Next is Six of Crows. Okay, why do I not have any in Very Good? This is strange. Six of Crows is phenomenal though. It took me a while to read it because I didn't like the original Grisha verse trilogy. And then I loved Six of Crows and now it's one of my faves. Next we have The Fifth Wave. I'm gonna put this one in Didn't Like. Uh, or eh. I don't know. I'll put it in eh. I enjoyed it at the time of reading it, but I never ended up picking up the third book, and it has faded from my mind since. I don't remember anything from it, so I'm kind of apathetic. Next, we have The Click. Okay, here's one we will put in very good. I loved these books in middle school so much. Having a mini fridge in your Range Rover 
on the way to school was like the height of luxury. Like that was my dream. Next we have The Dark Artifices by Cassandra Clare. I'm gonna put this one in very good. I did really enjoy this trilogy. I think the last one is my least favorite out of the three of them, but I had a great time. I loved reading them. I'm kind of distancing myself from loving Cassandra Clare. I still haven't picked up her most recent stuff. I don't know, there's just so much in the Shadowhunter world that I kind of want to read other things. I know though these books are always going to be there for me to fall back on though, so if I'm in a reading slump, I might pick up um, her newer series or something like that. But for now, we're good on the Shadowhunter front. Next, we have The Hunger Games by Suzanne, Susan, Suzanne Collins. Why did I have trouble pronouncing that? Um, I think I'm gonna put this one in hard eyes also. If I hadn't just reread these books, I feel like they would be going into very good because part of me was unsure if I liked them because they were hyped in this dystopian era, but no, these books are like actually genuinely good. There's a reason why the dystopian hype came after this is because these books were so good, everyone wanted to just copy them. Again, it was just one of those books that really lit my fire for reading in middle school, so hard eyes emoji it is. Next we have Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. I think I'm also going to, or not Clockwork Angel, Infernal Devices. I think I'm also gonna put this in very good, mainly because, well, I don't know, it could go in hard eyes, but I I feel like there's stuff in Hard Eyes that I love more than this. It's like at the front of Very Good though, you know? Next we have The Red Pyramid. I think it's The Kane Chronicles by Rick Riordan. I'm gonna say didn't like. I don't remember anything from it, but I don't remember loving it. I remember being very confused with a lot of the stuff. I think I read the first two books. Next we have Lunar Chronicles. I'm gonna put this in Very Good. I loved this series. It was very good. It's not quite top tier for me, like it's not a defining series, but I loved it. I will definitely be rereading it at some point. Then there's The Maze Runner by James Dashner. Again, I'm gonna put this one in didn't like. It was part of the dystopian hype. I remember being fine with it whenever I read it, and I did finish the series, I believe, but it was just underwhelming. Every book I felt like was worse than the one before it, so it just kind of like let me down. Then there's The Missing, I think is the series name by Margaret Peterson Haddix. I don't remember anything about these books, but I do remember really liking them, but I also remember the th third or fourth book? I think it was the fourth book is the last one that I read and I was kind of just confused the whole time so I think I'm gonna put it in eh. Which is weird because Margaret Peterson Haddix used to be one of my favorite authors. Why are both of her series in here? I don't know. She was iconic to me in middle school. Then we have The Mortal Instruments. I'm gonna put this in guilty pleasure because let's be honest, Mortal Instruments is just a soap opera essentially in book form. Then there's the selection, again, guilty pleasure. It's just a fun bubbly read. I've reread it multiple times whenever I've just felt like vibe into that. Then we have Shadow and Bone. I'm going to put this in didn't like because it's not even eh for me. I just genuinely didn't like any of the characters except for Nikolai. So glad he got his own series. I still need to read that book. I didn't like any of the characters. I didn't like any of the romantic interests. I loved the world which was a shame, which is ultimately the reason I picked up Six of Crows. It was fine. I only finished it because of the hype and because the covers are so pretty. Next we have the Sisters Grimm series. I freaking love these. Um, I'm gonna put this in nostalgia for now though because it's been a while since I've read them so I don't actually remember if they're good or not, but I have good feelings about them, which means I like them. Then there's the Spider, Spider Wick Chronicles. I'm gonna put this in very good because I also really love these and I remember some details, not all. I don't know. Actually, it probably also belongs in nostalgia. Yes, yes. Next is Throne of Glass. Um, This definitely ranks higher than Court of Thorns and Roses for me, so I'm gonna put it in very good, but this one's like at the bottom of very good. I don't know, actually, no, it's it's solidly in very good for me. I've just been shifting recently from like Cassandra Clare, Sergio Mass, all that kind of stuff. I'm kind of distancing from that a little bit. Not intentionally, I'm just not feeling as connected to those books as I used to. I did really, really love Throne of Glass, reading it, I reread it and loved it the second time too, so I think it solidly fits into very good. Next we have Twilight, the ultimate guilty pleasure, but it goes in nostalgia for me because, again, 
This book was iconic in middle school. I used to be one of those people who were like, I'm not like other girls. I don't like Twilight. And then one of my friends forced me to read um, the first book and I had no spine back then. I had to comply. I freaking loved them. The movies, garbage. Love them still. Books, garbage. I love them. They're so good. Next we have Uglies by Scott Westerfield. This one's a guilty pleasure for me. They're fine, but I had a really good time reading them. I've reread them a few times and they will always hold a special place in my heart. Next is Vampire Academy. Academy. This one goes into didn't like for me. I read the first two books, but they were just underwhelming. You could say they were eh, but I had strong enough feelings about it that I just didn't like it. And then lastly, we have Wolf by Wolf, which is a duology by Ryan Grodin. I freaking loved this book. This one goes in very good for sure. These books left me emotionally wrecked. So good. I don't hear a lot of talk about them, but phenomenal books. But that is the comprehensive ranking of every book that I have read. I hope I said something spicy that you disagree with so you can tell me in the comments what I got wrong. And I will fight you because this is all 100% accurate. It is the truth. Nothing I said was wrong. So we can have that discussion in the comments though. But for real, let me know um, what you would have ranked differently. Is there anything that I ranked super high that you would rank super low or vice versa? Like, is Nevernight in your hard eyes emoji category? I might judge you a little bit, but you know, we all have our different tastes and that's okay. But that's all I have for you for today. This was a fun little discussion for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next week.